In this lesson, we're going to look at how to use modules to make our Python programs more modular. A little play on words there. In other words, we're going to look at how to create import statements and import functions and classes from files that we've already created. First of all, let's take a look at two of the files we're going to use for import. The first file is a file that contains a couple of temperature conversion methods. Let's get rid of this test statement right here. We have Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit functions or methods, and we'll import these into a program to do some conversions. So let's create a script. We'll call it modules.py. So to import, all we have to do is write import and the name of the file. Now, the contents of that file are available to our Python program. So we can write a simple little script here. We'll say temperature equals 212, converted temp equals F to C temp, and then print the converted temp is. And watch what happens. I'm kind of giving you a little clue. It's not going to work. But let's just see what it's going to do anyway. So we'll run the script. And we get an error. It says F to C is not defined. Well, the reason we got that error is because we have to give it the fully qualified name when we try to access the function. So what we need to write is tempconv dot F to C temp. Now let's give it a try. And there we go. We've still got another old program in here from someplace. Let's find where that 32.0 is coming from. It must be coming from the temp. I bet I didn't save it. No, I didn't. So let's get rid of that. And let's save that file. Run it again. There we go. And that's exactly what our script said to do. And we can work the other way around. We'll say temp equals zero. Converted temp equals temp convert C to F temp. And then we can just steal this print statement and use it again. So a little control C, control V. Save the file. So 212 Fahrenheit is 100 Celsius, and 0 Celsius is 32 Fahrenheit. So that all worked correctly. If you don't want to use the fully qualified name, you can do it like this. You can say from temp convert or temp con import C to F. Well, I'll tell you what, let's do them both at the same time. From temp con import F to C. Now we can use the function name or the method name directly without qualifying it. Just like that. So let's save the file, bring up our window. Let's clear the screen. And let's run it again. And we get the same response. So you can either use the import statement alone and use fully qualified function names, or you can use the from statement, and then you can use the function name without the name of the import file. That choice is really up to you. Now let's look at another example. What we'll do here is we'll just comment these lines out so we can keep them in the script. And we can do the same thing with classes. In fact, almost always when you create a class, you're going to put it in its own file and then import that class into your program. So let's take a look. If you remember from our object-oriented programming examples, we had a file called shapes that included the shape class and the rectangle class. So let's import shapes here. And we're going to say S1 is equal to shapes, shape. We'll set a XY coordinate and we'll print the value. And then let's create a rectangle like so and print its value, R1, not F1. There we go. Save the file. Bring up our man prop window, clear the screen. And there are our two objects and their two string methods. Just like with the previous example, if we want to use just the class names themselves, we can say from shapes import shape and from shapes import rectangle. And then we can use the class name without the import file name. Save the file. Same result. So there you've seen two common examples of using import files to bring in some functions or methods that we need or to bring in classes that we want to use in our program that we don't want to clutter up the file with the definition of the class. Having the ability to import modules just provides much more modularity in your Python programming and should be used as often as possible.
This brings us now to the last lesson in this overview, and here we're going to talk about error handling, or a better term for it is exception handling in Python, where we see how to handle exceptions and errors so that our programs don't crash, but that we can gracefully deal with the problems that come up when running our scripts. And we're going to see how to do that in the next lesson.